is a pleasure and a privilege to give this talk. I would like to start by giving a synopsis within three slides of the whole talk. And it is the title is Radiotherapy During Lumpectomy for Breast Cancer is better for patients because it leads to fewer deaths than conventional radiotherapy and leads to better quality of life. So you can see this sunrise um, going on to having surgery um, and then sun would set, treatment would finish and sun would set just once and with better length and quality of life. And perhaps it is because of this that to our surprise, National Institute of Health Research put up this on their website, the list of five amazing health research breakthroughs. And among the list was the COVID vaccine and COVID treatments and target IORT. And in, the, in this current month, the top radiotherapy journal has the most downloaded paper uh, in uh, breast cancer is the target IORT paper. And it's in, list in the fifth in amongst all papers. Why might it be the case? It is because target IORT improves the quality of life and reduces deaths. So that is the message really for the whole talk. And it is probably this reason that over 50,000 patients have been treated all over the world. And each of these dots represents one, one center. And they have given me the data that has given rise to this total number. Uh, 260 centers from 38 countries have treated patients with target IORT and all based on the research that we had done in University College London. I would like to thank the writing committee, Professor Michael Baum, Professor Jeffrey Tobias, and Professor Max Balsara, as well as all the authors of the recent papers for their contribution, and the trial steering committee, as well as acknowledgements are due to patients from these 33 centers and their individual clinical teams, without which this research could not have happened. My conflict of interest is, uh, potential conflict of interest is grant funding from UCL and honoraria from Carl Zeiss. So the main treatment of breast cancer, as this distinguished audience know, is lumpectomy or mastectomy. When lumpectomy is done, or what we call wide local excision, radiotherapy is required. But when mastectomy is done, radiotherapy is usually not required. So after the cancer operation of wide local excision, a woman needs to go from her home back and forth to the radiotherapy center for three to six weeks. That is the standard. And this is quite onerous to many women. They many times choose to have a mastectomy instead. And this is a video taken by Mr. Nathan Coombs in uh, near London. You can see this. I realized. Ooh. I realized that while I'd be driving this only once or twice, a month, most of my patients will be asked to drive this at least three or four weeks um, for their radiotherapy. What a horrible journey I thought they had to put up with. So you can see this road, people traveling this every day. And this is a map of England, UK. And you can see the red dots are the radiotherapy centers. And a, a 13 mile radius around them is what the red dot diameter is. And so everyone outside this red dot has to travel more than 26 miles every day to take their radiotherapy. So even in England, there are a lot of green areas here where patients have to travel much more distance. And this is true in many, many parts of the world, including uh, the developed world. So this is not a problem that is limited to uh, developing countries. So by reducing travel, target could reduce global warming. The harmful effects of scattered irradiation from the whole breast radiotherapy are well known. So whole breast radiotherapy causes scattered irradiation to vital organs. When it goes on heart and coronary arteries, it increases the risk of heart attacks. And when it goes to organs such as the lung and esophagus, it can cause cancers which were much more fatal than breast cancer. Now, the, this study from Oxford has shown that in smokers, this increased mortality from other causes is much higher in smokers. So 23% of smokers who have external beam radiotherapy for breast cancer will die, not just get heart attacks or lung cancer, they will die from heart attacks or lung cancer. This is a 6% increase because of whole breast radiotherapy. So 
it is not justifiable when the benefit in terms of survival from radiotherapy is not 6%. And that is not going to be the case in most cases of early breast cancer. So not only are the side effects present, not only is it inconvenient, patients should not be forced to choose between mastectomy. The other alternative is no radiotherapy. We know from centers that as you go further away from a radiotherapy center, many patients don't get um, radiotherapy. So I saw this when I was in Tata Hospital in India and telling patients that you have breast cancer, can you come for radiotherapy every day? If that was yes, we could preserve the breast. And if it was no, we needed a mastectomy. And this is a problem that is in Australia, in Denmark, in the UK, in US, and in many, many parts of the world. And I have since learned that it is present in almost everywhere in the world. Even in people living in the city have to make a journey within the city through the traffic for an hour or two every day to go back and forth to the hospital. So this clinical concern, this concern about travel, concern about radiotherapy toxicity, in addition, combined with this new data that I had when I was doing this work in 1994-1995 called whole organ analysis of mastectomy specimens. So after a mastectomy, I would take the breast, freeze it, and cut it in fine five millimeter slices. And then I took x-rays of these. If anything was abnormal in these x-rays, I would take that biopsy. And what I found at the end of the study is that 63% of women, in addition to the single cancer present, had other cancers. The green dots show the other cancers in the breast, distributed all over the breast. So these other cancers are present, but you contrast that with what happens in real patients. In real patients, recurrence occurs mostly around the primary tumor in the index quadrant. So this is the paradox. So although cancers are present, they remain occult. They don't grow. What grow are the ones near the tumor. I presented this very close to China in those days in Hong Kong, when it was not a part of China in 1995. And that is where this whole treatment of target IORT started. We published the paper in the British Journal of Cancer in 1996, where we felt that this data was the basis of a clinical trial to test whether radiotherapy only to the quadrant was enough. So we wrote this paper in 1996, I wrote a uh, letter in the Lancet with Professor Michael Baum, and we felt it might be sensible to target radiotherapy just to the tumor bed. So this is the biological rationale that led to this academic insight, and that's how target IOT was conceived. We created the device with industry collaboration and that led to the target A trial. So this target technique uses a 50 kV device, which is not a very high energy device. We created applicators of various sizes. So you have applicators from 1.5 centimeters to five centimeters at half centimeter difference. They go in the tumor bed, as you see in this video on the right-hand side and the breast tissue is wrapped around it with a very carefully laid purse string suture. Radiotherapy is delivered immediately after the lumpectomy. Focused radiation to the tumor bed targets tissues at the highest risk of local relapse. It avoids normal structures such as the heart and the lung. So what we have here is precision and immediacy. Here is a photograph of me doing this in London in full COVID gear. You can see that going, this device going inside the breast. That's how it looks. This photograph is actually taken in South Korea, close to you. Uh, I went there to, um, and was, was there assisting in this operation. So this is how it is done. It's very straightforward. It is COVID safe. So this academic insight, that is Professor Michael Baum and this Professor Jeffrey Tobias, in our early cases, this is in July, 1998. 
So you can see here the surgeons among you. That's how the purse string is taken. That's how it goes in, and that is the purse string. Okay. And you can see here, you take this very carefully. And this is really important. You can see the red line here, which is the purse string. It should be taken about eight to 10 millimeters from the dermis. So it should not go too close to the dermis. At the same time, it should not be too deep because when you tie it, whatever is on inside of it is what will receive the radiation. Whatever is on the outside of it will not receive radiation. You need to radiate the tumor bed properly. So here the surgeon has the capacity and in many countries, the surgeon and the radiation oncologist are both in the operation theater, not so in the UK, but it is so in Australia, it is so in Germany and many countries where this purse string is taken carefully so that it wraps around the applicator and adheres to it very well. I will show you what the applicator looks like. That's what the applicator looks like. You can see this uh, and it is, it's very small and this applicator goes into the tumor bed, okay? Right, so you can see how this purse string is taken. Sorry, uh, where's the mouse gone? Okay. So then the first string finishes and you tie it up after the inserting the applicator surface, okay? Applicator inside the wound. So we published the technique back in 2002 and uh, the first 25 patients results were published in 2001 and we started the randomized clinical trial. It was so good, we could have just used it, but that is not good evidence. So we needed to make evidence to see whether it works in terms of treating the cancer. That's why I started a randomized clinical trial asking the question whether this can replace the usual three to six weeks of post-operative radiotherapy. So this is a gold standard of testing whether treatments work. Radiotherapy patients were randomly allocated to receive either target IORT or full breast radiotherapy. And this is one of the largest randomized trials in 10 countries. Patients needed to be 45 years and older with unifocal invasive ductal cancer. So we excluded lobular cancers. The tumor size was preferably less than three and a half centimeters. We did not specify that patients needed to have an MRI scan. MRI was done only in about 5.6% of patients. That was a random allocation to receive target or EBRT. We said that post-operatively, if we found some surprising results, we may add whole breast radiotherapy. So it was a pragmatic risk-adapted approach. The first results were fast-tracked by the Lancet after we submitted the paper to them in 2010, and they put our conclusions on their front page, masthead, saying that for selected patients, single-dose radiotherapy at the time of surgery should be considered as an alternative to external beam radiotherapy. We published the second results of survival, the first results of survival in 2013, and our initial conclusions were reconfirmed. And then from 2013 onwards, we were waiting and continuing follow-up for long-term results. During this time, while waiting, we said how the many obvious benefits of target for breast cancer were confirmed. These are obvious to giving radiotherapy during surgery and to the small area. So we felt cosmetic outcome would be superior and it was indeed superior. Objective assessment and patient reported outcomes of this showed that cosmetic outcome is superior with target IORT. Quality of life is superior with target IORT. And these are studies from Germany and Australia. Our colleagues in these, in these centers showed that uh, cosmetic and breast related quality of life is better with target A, if we target IOT. Studies from Denmark showed that pain and breast and arm symptoms were lesser with target IOT. And this is even if, if you give it as a second operation. What about patient preference? Patients prefer target IOT. Secondly, if doctors were asked, if you had breast cancer, what treatment would you take? they preferred target IORT. 
And this is a most recent study done last year, where in the US on the West Coast, patients were asked and given a choice because there were some studies that suggested that over 65 patients may not read radiotherapy. And here are patients who offered all these options. 75% of the patients chose target IORT, only 14% opted for whole breast radiation, 5% chose to omit radiation only, and only 6% chose a mastectomy. So patients prefer target IORT. It saves economy, it saves money to the health system. So in the US, over the course of five years, Target could save $1.4 billion. In the UK, the cost of giving radiotherapy is less, so it would be about $9 million per uh, pounds per UK per year. And these are studies that are already published. And I've showed you how it reduces patients' travels to the hospital, and this is published in the BMJ Open Access, uh, BMJ Open uh, in 2016. There is one more very interesting biological effect of target IORT, and this will interest many of you because this is a biological effect on tumor microenvironment. When we do surgery, there is wounding, and whenever there is wounding, there is fluid collecting there. This is all through our evolution has been designed, not designed, has evolved to make healing better. So this wound fluid contains rich nutrients, rich cytokines that stimulate proliferation, motility, and invasiveness. Not just a fibroblast which help healing, but it also does it for cancer cells. So after surgery, the environment is fantastic for cancer cells to grow, which is probably why cancer recurrence occurs around the wound. But what is the good news here is that if you give intraoperative radiotherapy, this stimulatory effect of wound fluid on cancer cells is abrogated, is stopped. So target IORT impairs the stimulation of breast cancer cell proliferation and invasion caused by surgical wounding. You can see it here. This figure shows how the invaded cells in normal fluid are reduced when you give IORT. In this video on top, you can see how the cells are moving actively around, but they're not moving so well in the picture below in which there is uh, uh, radiotherapy given before the wound fluid was taken in the 24 hours. You may not notice this very carefully in these diagrams, but this has been analyzed by video microscopy and it confirmed that it is statistically significant less movement of cells bathing in a wound fluid after target IORT. I want to ask you, Jessica, am I, my speed of speaking, is that okay? That is okay, that is okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have now started, the, we started the randomized trial in year 2000, where we compared target with whole breast radiotherapy. We have seen how it has many benefits for patients, better cosmetic outcome, better quality of life, less pain, less breast and arm symptoms, Patients prefer it, doctors would prefer it, it's cost saving and it reduces travel. So you can see all these publications of the benefit. But what about the long-term cancer outcomes? This is the most important step and this is what patients are most bothered about. So breast cancer has a long natural history. So long-term outcomes are important. The first patient was randomized in year 2000. The data log for the long-term outcomes was in July, 2019. And for completeness of follow-up, we set the bar high. We said that follow-up was considered complete only if 95% patients had at least five-year complete follow-up and 90% patients had either a 10-year follow-up or had been seen within the previous year. So this was a very high level of completeness that we said before the data was unblinded for analysis. So we had not seen the data until this happened. So teams all over the world helped to achieve the high level of completeness of follow-up of data to 95%. The C2 team at UCL helped in making this happen. So and you can see this. lost two patients. I'm so sorry about that. One has immigrated to Finland and one have immigrated to Bulgaria. And this is out of how many patients? 
As out of uh, 534 patients, we have lost two, and I'm so sorry for that. I'm trying to get data on the lady who uh, immigrated to Finland. I got a phone number, but she don't pick up the phone. But the one who immigrated to Bulgaria, I'm sorry to say, I think I lost her. So you can see it here how we have lost very, very few patients to follow up. And this is two out of 500. So target A has the largest amount of follow-up data among all partial breast radiation trials for invasive breast cancer. You can see here this graph that shows the number of patients for years of follow-up. So this is the total patients. The red bar shows five years follow-up and so on. And for all trials of partial breast radiation around the world, and you can see target here has the maximum amount of data for invasive breast cancer in partial breast radiation. Okay, now come the results. The randomized arms of the target A trial were well matched in terms of all factors. Importantly, there is no difference in age and body mass index. These are both uh, risk factors for cardiovascular disease and also for cancer of any type. There was no difference at all in the two arms of the trial. And you'll see why this is important shortly. There was no difference in breast cancer uh, characteristics between the two randomized arms. And of course, this was a randomized clinical trial perspective. So these are the advantages we have seen. And what is the patient thinking of? The patient is asking, what is my chance of living without cancer coming back? Which is the most important question. Now here, I want to come to a statistical point here. Analysis of pure local recurrence, if it is for longer term, is at odds with basic sense check if patients die. So example here, this is a paper, separate paper, not target. This is from a CALGB trial published in JCO. Okay, this is not target A. If you see this overall survival graph, you can see that at 10 years, 60% patients are alive. Remember this, 60% patients are alive. But the same paper gives a graph of local recurrence-free survival at 10 years of 90%. How can 90% patients be alive without local recurrence when only 60% are actually alive? This happens because in these kaplan meier graphs, they censor the dead patients. Amongst you who are doing any statistics, you'll realize how censored patients, if you, if you censor dead patients, this plot is flawed. So death must be counted as an event when you analyze for local recurrence. Because in order to get a local recurrence, in order to have the potential to have a local recurrence, one needs to be alive. So you cannot discount the deaths. This is present in other, other studies as well. So you can see this is a study where EORTC study, where that's a survival that shows 80% are alive at 10 years. But if you say local recurrence is 10%, that means 90% should be alive without local recurrence. That is not correct. Therefore, you have to include deaths while calculating local recurrence-free survival or local control. And that's what we have done when we do long-term follow-up of target A trial, okay? So if patients die, we need to find out what is local recurrence-free survival. The long-term results were published in the British Medical Journal and the British Journal of Cancer in August, 2020 and in May, 2021. And here are the results. What is the chance of remaining cancer-free in the breast? So this is a one, the main result, the primary outcome, because we're talking about radiotherapy in terms of local control. There was no difference in local recurrence-free survival or invasive local recurrence-free survival between the two arms of the randomized clinical trial. So the chance of remaining cancer-free in the breast was the same whether you gave the single dose radiotherapy during surgery as a risk-adapted approach or whole breast radiotherapy to everybody. What is the chance of preserving the breast? Here, the mastectomy-free survival or breast preservation, there was absolutely no difference between the two randomized arms. The next question, what is the chance of remaining cancer-free elsewhere in the body? So distant disease-free survival. So distant disease to survival or freedom from distant disease, absolutely no difference between the two randomized arms at all. 
In fact, it looks as if it is better for target, but not statistically significant at all. What about the local treatment as per the treatment received? There was no difference than even when target was the only treatment given to patients and some patients got target plus EBRT and some patients got EBRT. There was no difference between these three groups in a non-randomized manner. So you can see here the main outcomes in one single slide. So there's comparable long-term breast cancer outcome as you can see from local control, breast preservation, no difference, breast cancer death, no difference. And this is what I will talk about very soon about non-breast cancer deaths. There was significantly fewer non-breast cancer deaths and there was improved overall survival for our grade, and one, grade one and grade two cancers, which formed a large proportion, nearly 1800 patients, where there was an overall survival benefit of giving target IORT. Next, we come to the point of local relapse after whole breast radiotherapy. Let me tell you one thing, you can scan this thing with your telephone, uh, with a camera, and you'll get to the main papers. So if you scan any of these, you'll get to the main papers. That's what these QR codes are. So local relapse after whole breast radiotherapy has poor prognosis. That is what we found in the trial, but there was a good news. So this is hazard of breast cancer death, which showed that long-term hazard, if those few patients get local recurrence after ABRT, is high. After whole breast radiotherapy, if patients get local recurrence, they have a much higher chance of dying than if they don't get local recurrence. But for target IOT, when patients have received intraoperative radiotherapy, if they get a local recurrence, they have no increased risk of dying from breast cancer or from dying anyway. So what I'm trying to say here is tar with target IORT, there's excellent prognosis even after local relapse. So it is as good as without a local relapse. So this is really good news. What about subgroup analysis? You must remember that target A had patients, 85% were under 70 years of age, a large proportion of patients were grade three, node positive or ER or PR negative. So there was a significant proportion of high risk patients in the target A trial. And this is different from other trials of partial breast radiation or no radiotherapy. And what we found is that the local control is comparable with whole breast radiotherapy in every tumor subgroup. So it works in all the tumor top subgroups, local control is no different from whole breast radiotherapy. What is the chance of survival from breast cancer? This is a magnified graph published in the BMJ. You can see that the mortality from breast cancer is absolutely no different between the two arms of the trial. So survival from breast cancer is absolutely fine. Survival from other causes, mortality from deaths from other causes such as heart attacks, lung cancers, lung problems and other cancers was significantly fewer with target IORT. There was a 41% 40, uh, reduction and the difference was about four and a half percent at 12 years. This is not a surprise as you know that um, harmful effects of target uh, of scattered radiation have been well known. And we know that within six months of whole breast radiotherapy, cardiac perfusion defects occur within six months. And this was published in long ago in 2003. It also increases the risk of lung esophagus and sarcoma. So it can develop uh, many fatal cancers. And this is a large study. So with these effects, as I told you before, they are significantly worse if people are smokers. So I feel it is unethical to not offer target IORT to eligible patients who are smokers. So I think smokers should definitely be offered target IORT because if they are given whole breast radiotherapy, they have a much higher chance of dying because of the radiotherapy than because of breast cancer. So the, we, are we found that this is reduced because of avoiding of whole breast radiotherapy, but can, could there be another reason? And you may be aware of what is called as an upscopal effect. So remember that in target A trial, patients who were randomized to receive target IORT 
there was a reduction in non-breast cancer mortality, but some of these patients also received whole breast radiotherapy, about 20% of them, when they were found to have worse prognostic features. That was the protocol. That was the protocol. Now we have a group where we can compare EBRT versus those who received no additional EBRT, asking the question, does avoiding EBRT reduce non-breast cancer deaths? And the answer was yes non-breast cancer deaths were reduced by avoiding EBRT. But it's no point in just avoiding EBRT and not giving any radiation because that increases local recurrence rate. So you should give some radiation during the operation. What happens to those who received additional EBRT? Even there, there is a reduced non-breast cancer deaths. And we think that this is because of giving a wound fluid effect of target causing an epscopal effect. So avoiding radiotherapy reduces deaths giving target seems to reduce deaths because of what is called as an abscopal effect. Abscopal means away from the site of giving the radiation. And this has been well studied over the last 10 years. And we find that it makes a difference to patients. Uh, it, it has been found in many studies. The mechanism may be immunological stimulation because of high dose in a single dose. What about overall survival? This is what is the really the most important message here. In the subgroup analysis, we found that for grade one and two cancers, there was a significant improvement in overall survival. And you can see this in these graphs. So on the left-hand side, you can see there's a significant improvement in overall survival with grade one and two cancers, which are 1,796 patients. And the reduction in mortality was 15% to 10.5%. In grade three cancers, there was no difference at all in overall survival. So it is safe to use it in grade three cancers. There is no reason to avoid this in grade three cancers at all. You see the ASCO guidelines, the ASTRO guidelines, all of them had said, give partial breast radiation only in the low risk group. That is because those trials only had low risk patients we had a large number of low risk patients, high risk patients in the study, 443 patients randomly allocated to receive target versus no target, no, uh, uh, no EBRT. So here we have the results that show there is no reduction in overall more survival, and there is an improvement in patient convenience, quality of life, pain, cosmetic outcome, and so many other factors for the patient. This overall survival benefit, which we get in, in grade one and two cancers is important. It looks only 4%, 4.5%, but it is similar in magnitude to the benefit from trastuzumab or Herceptin in this group of patients. So trastuzumab improves overall survival by about 4.5%, a reduction by two thirds or one third, about from 23% to 16%. So the benefit of EBR target IORT is similar to that of Herceptin. So you see that? And it is comparable to the one year course of Herceptin where Herceptin costs $50,000. It hurts the heart while target IORT is cost saving and protects the heart. And, but it is in the hands of the surgeon and the radiation oncologist to give target IORT okay, during the operation. So the new insights paper showed that it is suitable for subgroup of patients who are eligible to take part in the target A trial, that is 45 years and older, invasive ductal carcinomas, less than three and a half centimeters in size, and suitable for breast conserving surgery. The evidence-based guideline is this for clinical implementation. There is improved survival if grade one and two of more than 4%, no detriment in grade three, so how can we not offer it to suitable patients? Some patients require a supplemental EBRT. So use this to scan with your phone. When you go on the phone and look at it, it will show you a link. So go ahead and go to the link. It tells you the benefit of EBRT. So you can put in your patient's details and see whether this patient would receive external beam or not. We have shown that local recurrences after EBR, after IORT do not have worse prognosis. And 
deaths reduced by avoiding EPRT as well as by giving target IORT, possibly by a beneficial abscopal effect during lumpectomy to protect from cardiovascular, lung, and other cancer deaths. So this was a very large prospective randomized clinical trial, which ran for 12 years, and now we have a median follow-up of nine years. So total maximum follow-up of 20 years. The first paper was published in 2010 in The Lancet, and long-term results were published in the BMJ and the British Journal of Cancer which showed that breast cancer control is comparable to EBRT, there are reduced non-breast cancer deaths, it's effective in all ductal subtypes, it's improved overall survival if grade one or two, we have a decision aid for adding EBRT after target IORT, local relapse has better prognosis than EBRT, and it reduces non-breast cancer mortality even when additional EBRT is given. So, this research paper, when it was published in the BMJ, made the headlines in the Times on the front page above the fold. You can see how it came up there. It had substantial high-risk population, as I said before, a large proportion are younger than 70. We had 400, more than 400 patients who had positive nodes, grade three cancers, or ERPR negative tumors. This is much higher risk than trials of no radiotherapy or other PBI trials. Now this is a question. Is no radiotherapy a good idea? So PRIME2 trial tested this and many other trials have tested this. Even if you select excellent prognosis cancers, only older patients, only grade one or two, only ER positive, only node negative, despite that, all these trials have shown a high rate of local recurrence. At 10 years, PRIME2 trial had 10% local recurrence versus 1% with radiotherapy. Imagine <coughs> one in 10 of your patients coming back for recurrence. It's not nice. And there is no survival benefit in this PRIME2 trial. There should have been a survival benefit, but it looks like from the trial that a reduction in non-breast cancer mortality was nullified by an increase, possible increase, in breast cancer mortality because of the local recurrence. You can see here, the cardiovascular deaths was 3.9% with no iota, but 6% with radiotherapy. This is in prime two, but total deaths were the same. So it looks like breast cancer deaths were increased when you give no radiotherapy. So by giving radiotherapy during surgery with target, you avoid local recurrence and subsequent death. At the same time, avoid non-breast cancer deaths. So therefore, it is not ethical to not give radiotherapy to patients who are older or good prognosis. And that is what patients want. Patients want to have intraoperative radiotherapy. Now I come to this point of the five day fast forward schedule, which is now being pushed in the UK. There's higher radiation dose per day to the whole breast. It leads to seven extra visits at least, and 25% patients get 13 visits. So there are 15 visits in addition to these extra treatments. And it is a backward step because instead of reducing the radiation, whole breast is radiated. So it is an over-treatment for many patients. It does not avoid scattered irradiation to nearby vital organs, such as the heart, the lung, and the esophagus. There is higher local toxicity, and we are seeing this in patients now who have been treated. 25% of the patients report having a hardened and a firm breast with this fast forward regimen. With fast forward, not target, this is fast forward five day external beam radiotherapy. Five day external beam radiotherapy causes toxicity, which is higher. And there is no long-term data with this five day regimen. So five day regimen is not a good idea. What about brachytherapy? Imagine this patients going through these wires. It is an additional procedure. It causes many special rooms, lead-lined walls. It's 10 doses over five days and no reduction in deaths. External beam radiotherapy PBI is higher toxicity, no reduction in deaths. You, keep, you have to keep going to the hospital on a daily basis. Whereas we target, it's a median risk population, long-term follow-up, better quality of life, no extra visits in 80%. You don't have to go back to the hospital at all. It is delivered during the cancer surgery. 
there is no scattered irradiation and a significant reduction in deaths. So this, what I showed you, the comparison has been published in British Journal of Cancer in February last year. And you can access this by going through this link. And that is where all the trials are compared, what I showed you now, other methods of radiation. And you can see how target IRT comes out very well in this comparison. Target IRT during lumpectomy is better for patients than other PBI approaches. And this is published in the uh, top radiotherapy journal, International Journal of Radiation Oncology, Biology and Physics. This is in Nature Reviews Clinical Oncology. Now there is powerful evidence to change practice. There are many prospective studies in uh, France, in Germany, Denmark, Switzerland, in China, in in, uh, and many, many centers. So this study is from a single from a single center in France where 200 patients were done and we've got a five, local recurrence rate of just 2.5%. This is a study, a real world study from uh, Zhengzhou province um, where it was a case um, propensity match score of case control study where five-year local recurrences was 3.2% versus 3.1%. And there the suitability was much wider even anybody less than five centimeters and no exclusion based on ER, grade or nodes. And the outcome was excellent. This is a study from Russia where local recurrence of 1.5% was reported at three years. And they have now treated over thousand patients in St. Petersburg in a very busy center. This is a study from uh, US, from, from, from France, from three centers, 676 patients. They also found very low local recurrence rate. This is a prospective real world study from Germany, France, Denmark, and Switzerland, where five-year local recurrence of 1.5% is recorded in patients over the age of 70. I want to point out the difference between target and Elliott. Elliott is the other method of giving intraoperative radiation pioneered by Professor Veronese in Italy. They did not find uh, that this was uh, good enough. Now I think the difference is that there is, in, when giving Elliott, you need to give a lot of dissection of tissues. You need to oppose the tissues and give radiation from outside. So this is Elliott and this is target where it is given to fresh breast tissue without disturbance of the wound. So this, I believe, can cause um, disruption of tissues leading to partially deoxygenated tissues, which might reduce their effectivity. Therefore, Elliott doesn't seem to make a difference. This is uh, IORT given in a different manner. Whereas with target IORT, that's why we call it target IORT, it, is, it works. It also works when you do oncoplastic surgery, which is now gaining a lot of popularity. This study is from um, Germany, where IORT, that is target IORT, was given during oncoplastic surgery, where you can give the radiation to the right place at the right time. Otherwise, radiation oncology doesn't know where to give the radiation. So it is given, it ensures high level of precision and immediacy of radiotherapy. So it works very well. So the first time I presented this data was in San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference in 2012, a large number, large meeting. And we have been meeting on a regular basis. And some of you might have come to these meetings in Germany for users meeting in 2013. That's in 2014. That's in 2015, where we had a very large um, meeting. This is in Las Vegas in USA. That is in Bangkok in Thailand in 2016. That's again in the US. That's in Germany in 2018 and 2019 in, in US and in New Orleans, just before the pandemic started in 2020 in the US. As I said before, I have contacted most of these centers around the world and they have told me how many patients they have treated. And the total count comes to 45,000. And that was three years, two, two and a half years ago. So I expect now over 50,000 patients around the world have treated patients with target IORT. The independent UK panel 
by Sir Michael Marmot, published in 2013, said that radiotherapy should be moved to giving target IORT and it reduces non-breast cancer-related deaths. The results, when they were published, received a lot of publicity all over the world. And this is in New York. This is in Los Angeles. This is in, in UK again. This is one of our patients who is a journalist. NICE gave recommendation to use target IORT in 2014. In 2015, Australia approved target IORT for government funding. And these were the results in 2020. And most centers have reported that they have been treating many more patients with target IORT during the COVID pandemic. In the UK, it is the law that you must inform patients to, of all possible options whenever we have evidence to support them. So these are the benefits, <coughs> but some people may consider target IORT as a threat because it may make less money. But if the payment is made by value rather than by activity, then there is no need to fear the reduced income. Until now, I've been speaking about using target IORT as the only radiation treatment. And the results of target A trial, which have long completed recruitment and results have been published. Target B trial, where some centers in China are participating, is recruiting and is open for new centers. Target boost during radiotherapy, we know from studies such as these, it seems to reduce local recurrence and may improve survival. So this is the target B superiority trial of patients younger than 45, but high risk after receiving neoadjuvant chemotherapy. They are being randomized to receive target as a boost or they receive EBRT boost postoperatively. Everybody gets whole breast radiotherapy in this high risk group. And it is um, more than 1600 patients have been randomized in the UK, Europe, USA, South Korea, China, Middle East, and South Africa. And that trial is continuing. So these are the long-term results of target. Risk adapted achieves comparable local long-term cancer control. It reduces non-breast cancer mortality. Prognosis after local recurrence is better than after EBRT. And overall survival benefit for grade one and two cancers. It causes less pain, cosmetically superior, more convenient and lower cost. If you want to take a screenshot of this, this is the main results. And uh, the QR code takes you to the main papers. And I will leave you with this patient talking about it. I'm Marcel Bernstein. Eight years ago, I was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. I had it for two months only before I was cured. I had target IORT at the same time as the operation to remove the cancer. I spent one night in hospital and I was back at work within days. No pain at any time, no complications, no scarring. I can't even tell where on my breast the surgery was and no recurrence, eight years. And that isn't just me being lucky. Studies show that my experience is similar to that of other women who've had target. I am so happy I was able to have this treatment. You can scan this and um, let me know your contact details if you would like to speak with me or individually and I can give your comments or come and get in touch with me. Uh, my email address is jayanthvaidya at gmail.com or jayanth.vaidya at ucl.ac.uk. Thank you. So uh, it has been a pleasure to um, give this keynote lecture. Um, I would have loved to be there, but it's been completely impossible. So thank you.